average citizen sees you guys as thieves. That is the end of this interview. Come and remove your mic. Come and remove your mic. You call me a thief on your show. Is that how you, you treat your guest? Calm down. What is wrong with telling me to calm down? I'm sorry. You call me a thief? I Parliament Talk Show. Welcome to the Parliament Talk Show. It is a political talk show where we discuss issues bedeviling African politics and leadership. My name is Ine and I am your host. Our guest on the show today is a notable parliamentarian, Honorable Zadis Soko, representing the masses federal constituency. You are welcome, sir. Power to the people. Straight to the point. Africa is so blessed with abundant natural resources. Yet our people still struggle to survive, even running away in search of greener pastures. What do you have to say about that, Honorable? That is the paradox of poverty in the midst of plenty. The stunted growth in the sub saharan Africa is as a result of bad governance and high-level corruption. Of which you are part of the bad governance and high-level corruption. Okay, I'm sorry about that. You see, I'm the only politician who will always tell you the truth, even though I'm part of the government. But I'm not part of the corruption. You know, a tree cannot make a forest. I'm like one against one thousand, in my case. All right, we will come back to the issue of corruption much later. But first, let me ask. Most African nations run to China for loans and aids. Just about 40 years ago, China was once an impoverished, backward, communist nation. Mm, you are very correct. Even some African nations at that time had a higher GDP more than China. Yes, talking about uh, gross domestic product, uh, countries like Kenya and a few others had a higher GDP uh, as at that time more than China. Yes, sir. Now my question is, how did this same broken, poor China of 40 years ago Turn around to becoming a global engine of capitalism and among world superpowers. The architect of modern China is Deng Xiaoping, who rose to power after the death of the communist leader Mao Zedong in 1976. You see, it is very easy for a nation to succeed if the leaders are empathic, visionary, and pragmatic like a Deng Xiaoping. How exactly do you mean? I would like you to throw more light on that. But before you do, we shall go for a quick commercial break. And when we are back, we shall throw more light on how a leader can turn a broke nation's destiny around. It's your girl, Ine. Parliament Talk Show. Welcome back to the Parliament Talk Show. And just before we went on break, Honorable Zadi had something to tell us about how a broken, failing nation can be made rich and successful by a visionary leader like Deng Xiaoping did in China. Please tell us how. Oh, yes. Deng Xiaoping chose pragmatism over ideologies. Can you please break that down for the purpose of some of my viewers? All right. Um, ideologies is like building castles in the air. Whereas you don't even know where you are going to get a bag of cement to build those castles. But pragmatism is simply deciding to get a bag of cement and start building a bungalow or a story building instead of building castles in the air. Most of our African leaders come to power with so many ideologies they don't even know how to bring to reality which is more like the fake promises you people make during campaigns. Am I right? Okay. I'm sorry, Sai, if that came up wrong. Yes. Please, let's focus on how China did it. Let's not personalize it, please. Now, a sincere and purposeful leader must renounce classism and think of the conscious effort how to leave the people out of poverty. And what exactly do you mean by classism? 
Uh, a typical example of classism can be found in Lagos, for example. If someone tells you he lives on Lagos mainland, you immediately read that person low. But immediately he tells you he lives on Lagos island, you rate him high. That is a typical example of classism and it must be denounced. I see. Oh yes. For example, people want to get job opportunity or contract opportunity, you start asking who recommended you, who do you know, man no man, where do you live, where did you come from? All this must be renounced by a visionary leader and everyone gets treated specially and equally, irrespective of who you know, where you are from or where you live. Do you think this can be achieved in Africa of this generation? Through a social revolution, it is possible. And there must be a radical change to the established order. A visionary leader can make it happen. So, technically, you are saying most of our leaders lack vision and possibly blinded by greed and corruption. I did not say that in there. Please don't complicate my political career. I still intend to run for office for another term. My point is, when Deng Xiaoping came to power 40 years ago, he visited many countries like Singapore, Japan, and all of that. Do you know what he told his people after all these visits? My viewers would love to know. He told his people, we must reject ideologies. We are too poor and backward. He said he felt sorry for his people. You see, if a leader truly feels sorry for his people, we will not be in this situation that we are. Because our leader feels sorry for no one. They don't. They don't feel sorry for nobody. That is why we are in this situation that we are. So it is safe to say that most of our leaders are like witches and wizards. You know, I did not say that. Don't put words in my mouth. However, do you know early on when Deng Xiaoping rose to power, he put himself in charge of education? Do you know a president can put himself in charge of any ministry? How many African leaders have you seen put themselves in charge of education where they want to push knowledge our people? Guess which ministry they like putting themselves? They mostly go for Ministry of Petroleum and even Finance Ministry. You said it all. Anyway, we will talk more about this, but first let's go on a quick commercial break. And when we are back, we will continue on this interesting topic. It's your girl, Ina. Parliament Talk Show. Welcome back to the Parliament Talk Show. Honorable, please, can you continue? Thank you very much, Inem. Now, it is clear that most African leaders only come to power to secure the bag for themselves. They are not out there to secure the future of our youth or the nation. Do you know Deng Xiaoping of China physically left China to visit NASA? That is the National Aeronautic Space Administration, which started since 1957. It is a United States agency responsible for science and technology. Exactly. Now tell me, how many African leaders have physically visited NASA? Can you count? Um, I think I can only remember Rwanda and Nigeria signing the Artemis Accord. I am not talking about Artemis Accord. Those are ideological signatures. I'm talking about presidents from Africa that have used their two legs, carried their two legs to visit NASA and to say, oh, wow, this is beautiful. We would love to start something even small like this in Africa. But I think that's excusable because we can't even afford it. Oh, really? So you think when Deng Xiaoping traveled to NASA to visit NASA, you thought he had money? To even start owning a bicycle factory at that time. Let me tell you, when the third industrial revolution started, which is the era of computing, then Sean Ping requested help from the UN. Do you know what he requested? They said, Oh, we would love to be part of this. How can you help us? But if it is us, it is loan we are going to be asking for. Loan and we borrow money and borrow money and borrow money. I'm very sure one day. African leaders will start borrowing money from LAPO and microfinance man. 
but honorable, what exactly do we borrow this money for? To solve problem, of course, and cater for our government expensive lifestyle. We don't borrow money to create. We don't borrow money to produce. We don't borrow money to create any market. We just borrow to spend lavishly. That is why I told you, most African leaders do not feel sorry for the masses. But you are a lawmaker. You are among those who approve the loan request. You see, this is how it works. It is through voting. For example, if the parliament president puts a motion to be voted for or against, Normally, parliamentarians will vote for either A's for four and nays for against. Before people like us, we shout nay. Our voices would have been drawn by hungry eyes on the floor of parliament. Because I'm a minority. What do you expect me to do? I feel really sad for you. No, you don't need to feel sad for me. I'm living well. I'm good. You should be feeling sad for the masses. So what is the way forward? You see, four major industrial revolutions have taken place. Industrial Revolution 1, that is the revolution of steel and coal. The second revolution is the revolution of electricity and gas. The third revolution is the revolution, in fact, is the industrial revolution, which is the digital revolution. Then the fourth revolution now is the artificial intelligence revolution. Where are we in all of this? We are still here fighting over ballot boss. We are here fighting over poly unit. We are here fighting over tribe. You are not from my tribe. You are from my tribe. Let me tell you something that can happen. One day, Africans will wake up. Other continents have moved to another planet. And we will call it rapture. Honorable... I honestly do see you as part of the problem. You are a politician. I'm the only politician who says the truth, I who says the naked truth as it is. And how dare you? How dare you want to fix it? How tell me how you want to fix it?